Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hey there, collectors, Steven here, and welcome to the first review of the 2023 Dragon Ball SH Figuarts Exclusive Editions. And today, we are going to be kicking it off with the SH Figuarts Super Saiyan Goku and Super Saiyan 2 Gohan set. Most, uh, most affectionately known in the community right now as the Ghost Ku figure and Gohan set. Yeah, very cool. So this set is meant to recreate the iconic scene in the Cell Saga where Gohan is injured, he's giving it up, he's almost done, but Goku comes in to save the day and they fire the father-son Kamehameha, obliterating Cell. But what is interesting there's no nod to Vegeta in this set. We can't forget our guy Vegeta who comes in clutch at the end of the day to distract Cell. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of credit there. But something to take note of, we did have an exclusive edition of Cell, it'll be it named just a little bit different, and uh, we don't have one of Vegeta yet here to recreate this scene, so maybe we'll get one in the future. Nevertheless, this set will run $90 at the show, and folks are going to wonder if this is going to be worth picking up because we have in total four Tamashii Nation's Dragon Ball exclusives, but three figure arts. So without any further delay, let's take a look to see whether or not this unique set is going to be worth adding into your collection. Before we get the review formally started, let's talk about how you can get these. If you're at SDCC, you'll need to go to the Marina Terrace for the Dragon Ball Activation Event Area and pick up a purchase ticket, then go to the Tamashi Nations booth 3329 and make your purchase. If you're not SDCC, only surface level details have been announced at this time, but some leftover stock will be available at the upcoming Tamashi Nations New York store, which will be opened up soon, and then orders will be open on Premium Bandai starting in August for delivery at a later date. I'll have links for the Premium Bandai site once they do go live. For further information on all of that goodness, you can follow Bandai Collect social media and the Tamashi Nation social media at the different outlets on your screen right now. If you're going to the convention or you're playing along at home and you want to check out all of the latest updates at SDCC, head on over to en.dragon-ball-official.com slash special slash SDCC 2023, or you can use the short URLs that have been up on the screen so you can check all the latest information and prices for not only SH Figure Arts, but all things Dragon Ball at SDCC, including the card game, figure eyes, and more. Additionally, as I stated before, you can follow Bandai Collect and Tamashi Nations on their socials found on the screen. Without further ado, let's jump into the review. So first up, we'll take a look at Gohan because we'll go by age first. So youngest to oldest. So for Gohan here, this will be a repaint of the Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan renewal, the, the teen Gohan that we had in the line, which was a previously premium Bandai release that at the time, Bluefin distribution brands brought over to the United States at retail sale. They are now known as Bandai Collectibles, folded into Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles America. So with that being said, a lot of folks had the opportunity to pick that up. So this is going to be a repaint of that with a translucent head sculpt with metallic paint applications. And now Gohan is going to have two different shades of purple on his body for his clothing. You're going to be able to see around the battle damage area in particularly, you're going to have a lighter, almost metallic looking, not quite metallic, actually, uh, paint apps but also similar to the New York 15th anniversary Goku Super Saiyan that was released. This one is going to have battle damage marking all around him as well. And that is very, very cool because if you recall from the iconic moment, the father son Kamehameha, Gohan is just super battle damaged and he is bleeding a little bit, which is not here, but honestly, considering as much damage as he had, this is going to be just fine. Now, a lot of folks were wondering about the actual hair, how it was going to look in hand, and I do have to say he looks completely fine, and I'm glad to say it actually looks pretty solid in hand. I actually do like it a lot. Now, what I am going to take note of is interchangeability, because we don't have the normal Super Saiyan hair that is included with this release. It's meant to be Super Saiyan 2, but don't worry, we'll take a look at that, in the comparison section closer to the end. Now, Super Saiyan Goku. 
This is going to be a repaint, a recast, not quite really, whatever you want to call it, of the full power Super Saiyan Goku that was a retail release, and that was one that was widely available, and folks had a chance to pick that up again at retail. So here we have him in a translucent blue plastic and a couple of paint applications here, there, along with some silver in some key areas. We are mostly going to have a blue spray, but around, let's say, I guess that may be the laces on his boots. We're going to have a little bit of silver tonnage here and there. And I do have to say that Goku does look rather solid, though I will note, I do hope the translucent plastic does hold up over time just because of sometimes, unfortunately, translucent plastic may be known to crack just because of stability. So fingers crossed, let's hope he lives long and prospers. No, force goes to anyway, with that being said, Goku does look solid. Though what would be really cool is if we do happen to see a retail release at some point of like a manga variation where sometimes Goku in this scene is drawn with black hair to be like his base form, but spiked up like Super Saiyan. So the Kaioken head sculpt, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'm just going to go ahead and grab him. We're going to bring him in right now for Goku. I mean, realistically speaking, again, this is going to be the full power Goku. So, you know, we do have the standard style joint system for, uh, for the neck, so it's going to be the head attaches in on the ball joint, and then there's going to be a hinge swivel system where it plugs in, so we're all good to go, and then the neck's going to be on a ball joint, okay? So for Goku's articulation, again, otherwise just kind of talking about it as I plug the hair back in, the body style, it's going to be basically just the entirety of the Goku, Goku renewal, so we don't really have too much to talk about here. Uh, we do have the little bit of butterfly hinges as we move the arms out. We do have the shoulder pads, which are attached on ball joints, so we can move those around at the shoulders. We do have ball joints where the arms plug into the body, so we can spin them around, and they float a little bit so we can get them to pivot and so forth. Hinges in the shoulders themselves, dedicated bicep swivels, which move nicely. We have double hinge elbows, okay. And then for the wrists, and for how the hands plug in, have a peg into the forearm hinge, and then the hands plug in on a ball joint so we can move them around. Just be wary of the direction of the hinge. For the ab crunch, do they move up? Just a little bit, and then ball joint movement. So that is good to see. All right, waist joint, we do have some movement there on a hinge and ball joint system as well, so we can twist and turn Goku's body. Thumbs up. For the hips, they are going to be using a ball joint system where they plug in so we can move the legs forward and back like this. And then we can kick the legs out side to side just like this. Um, be wary so this way you don't have plastic grinding on plastic. Then we do have thigh swivels, which is good. Double hinge knees, very nice. We do have double ball jointed ankles. So plug here, plug here, thumbs up. We can move them around the world's your oyster and toe hinge. We know Goku probably spent too long on Goku, but he is what he is. Goku, stand up, please. You know what? Lay down. You're dead. All right. Gohan, Gohan. Folks don't really uh, know Gohan too much because he came out quite some time ago. And this is actually my first time covering Gohan on the channel, right? All right. So we already covered how the joint system for the neck works on Goku ball joint where the head plugs in. We do have a hinge system for the head moving forward and back, and then a swivel for how that whole system plugs into the neck along with a ball joint for the neck piece plugging into the body. And then that is also how you're going to swap out the face plates. So very good to see. Okay, get that hair back on. All right. So for the shoulders, despite the fact that we have one with some clothing and one with none, they are going to have butterfly joints as well. So we can get Gohan's arms to move forward and they are going to have ball joints where they plug in as well. So we can spin Gohan's arms around. Cool. We do have dedicated bicep swivels for the arms. Nice double hinge elbows, which, yep, we get full range of movement out of both of them. And we don't even have to worry about trying to get the sculpt out of the way. It just works. For the wrists, once again, as you can see, same as his dad's hinge, we do have to swivel them, and then we can pop the hands right back on. All right, so ball joint, but a little bit restricted just because of the way the sculpt is. So just something to keep in mind that for Gohan, we're going to have to actually use the waist joint. 
which is rather curious. I've never actually really had a figure where the waist joint is going to be the bulk of the torso movement as much as it is here, but it still works. That's good. For the hips, they kick forward and back just like so, and then they kick out to the side just like that. Double hinge at the knees. Again, thigh swivel, even though I just talked about it. I'm not sure if I did, just want to make sure we're clear there. And then toe hinge that goes basically up at a 90 degree angle. For the ankle joints, the ankle rockers, um, he is wearing the piccolo style elf-like shoes, if you will. Um, but because of the way that they were sculpted and engineered at this time, um, they are not really well articulated. Uh, we can get, so if he's standing straight up, just that's the range of the movement there. Yeah, it was a sign of the times. But anyway, Gohan's articulation is still solid uh, for what it is. Uh, we can still get some fun poses, though uh, a renewal at some point would be good. But again, for what it is, he's fine. All right, time to talk about accessories. And Gohan comes with, I would say, just enough for them. So he's going to come with, aside from the defaults, four alternate hand parts and three alternate face plates. So in total, he's going to come with five hands and four faces. So talking about Gohan, first and foremost, for his face plates, he's going to come with one screaming face plate which is great. He's going to come with one gritting teeth faceplate, and then he's going to come with one looking off to the side faceplate, more so specific, so he can recreate the father-son Kamehameha. For the screaming faceplate, I don't necessarily think it captures just that last second explosion of energy that he has. I think that the eyes need to be a bit wider, and they need to be whited out just to catch those few frames of raw energy that Gohan has, but I think that this works just fine. For Goku... He is going to come with, in total, four extra sets of hands aside from the fists that he comes with, and he's going to have two alternate faceplates, one where he's gritting his teeth and one where he is yelling. So Goku is going to come with the standard hand parts that pretty much all the releases are going to come with. The splayed hands, he's going to come with the Kamehameha hands, the sort of fighting hands, and the instant transmission hands. For Gohan, we're going to get pretty much all the same hand parts that we got from the original release with splayed hands. The normal-ish Kamehameha hands, the dangling hands that are sort of splayed out, but then for this particular release, we are going to have a new set of hands that are going to have a peg in it, so this way he can use the Kamehameha because this is going to be the one that also came with the Super Saiyan 4 Goku that has a hole in it. So this is going to not be the original Kamehameha effect part that we got with the original base form Goku, the Ultra Instinct, the original Kaioken. No, it's not that one. It's going to be the newer one. And it's rather easy to assemble with the different energy light rays that come out of it. Though it's easy to assemble, I have noticed that they sometimes do like to pop out because the actual orb in and of itself is soft plastic, but easy to pop out, easy to put back in. Now, with that being said, that's going to be it for the accessories. And honestly, I think that's rather fine. One of the most notable omissions, though, from this release is going to be Yes, this is meant to recreate the father-son Kamehameha, however, it would have been cool if we would have gotten a faceplate where Gohan is crying after Cell smashed 16's head, and then we don't have the sort of blinking, screaming eye face that the original Gohan release came with. For the Force Ghost, Ghost Coup, um, we don't really necessarily need anything else, um, because this is sort of an original concept design, and it's pretty neat, so two thumbs up. I think it's rather rock solid. Considering everything that is in this release, I'm just saying what would have been cool in addition. Overall, solid, but if you do need anything else like effect parts, extra, or support stands, you know I have videos to help you out. Now before we finish out the review with a comparison with the original release, here's going to be a size comparison with all of the SDCC 2023 exclusive edition releases. And you can see how well they'll stack up with some other figures you're going to have on your shelf. Just so this way you're able to see, I'm going to include the 15th Anniversary World Tour Goku alongside these as well. Just so you can see how well the metallic hair paint application stacks up between all of the releases. Overall, I think rather fine. All right, so something you've been waiting for, a side-by-side -side comparison with the original releases. So for Goku here, here's going to be a side-by-side -side comparison with the original full-power Super Saiyan Goku release. 
very nice. As you can see, here's what he looks like. We're just going to go with the default faceplate for both of these. Okay, pretty cool. Obviously, we can see that the, the Goku that comes in this set is going to be blue, opposed to orange and yellow. Cool. Gohan, here's going to be the most notable thing, because I know this is what you're going to want to see here. So obviously, here are going to be the differences. Okay, very cool. Here's going to be what the translucent sculpt and metallic paint application is going to look like compared to the original. But here's something maybe you've been wondering if you have the original compatibility, because with the original release, you could swap between the Super Saiyan 2 and the Super Saiyan hair parts. And I'm pleased to say you can do that with this release. It was a little bit tricky because the hinge for the neck on the exclusive edition did like to drop before I was able to pop the heads for the original release on, but you can do that. When it comes to using the face plates, because the face plates for the exclusive edition do have the battle damage opposed to the original release, uh, those face plates work pretty well for a color match with the head sculpt for the original release, but vice versa, mm, I don't know, not that great of a match to me. So I'm pretty much just keeping this section going just so this way we can get enough time for some comparison pictures and you can see what it looks like when you do some swapping. Overall, I think if you have both of them, then you pretty much have a good solid match here. So buy now, skip or wait for a deal. I do want to reiterate here, if you are looking to pick this up at SDCC, you are going to have to go over to the Marina Terrace area, so this way you can pick up a ticket, and then you're going to have to go to Tamashi Nation's booth, 3329, and make your purchase there. Is that clear? Okay, cool. For 90 bucks, I think this is going to be pretty solid, considering the exclusive nature of this set, and considering the original Gohan release, I think was like 50, and Goku was 35. So, I'm not the best with math, but I think that checks out pretty fine. Overall, this is going to be rather solid, and if you're a fan of that iconic moment in Dragon Ball history, or you just need a Gohan and you want something that's really novel, the Ghost Coup, then congratulations, this is a rather unique set. All right, and that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I do want to make mention, make sure you are following the official channel. So for social media, make sure you are following on Twitter at Bandai Collect and at Tamashi Nations. On Instagram at Bandai Collect and at Instamashi and on TikTok at Bandai Official. Thank you to Bandai Namco Toys and Collectibles America, specifically the folks at Bandai Collect for coordinating sending this out for a look for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will be at SDCC, so make sure you stop by and say hi. Thank you again. I'll catch you in the next one.